Hi, I'm Lisa Fletcher, and you're in the stream. Today, protests in Bulgaria have forced the government to step down. But will their departure fix the root causes of Bulgaria's broken democracy? Our digital producer, Malika Bilal, is here looking for your live feedback. So during the show, tweet her, use the hashtag AJStream. Malika, online we're seeing what's pretty typical of larger protest movements, which is a lot of complaints that it, they really lack unity. Right, and it's those divisions that people are talking about. On Facebook, Radi Radev says, the protesters cannot unite around common demands, let alone a political idea or a party. In the meantime, the cost of living and unemployment are rising. You know, for those of you at home, we want to know what you think about this topic as well. So join the conversation by using the hashtag AJStream. And joining us in studio is Asen Asenov. He is uh, a professor and he writes about Bulgarian politics. He's also a lecturer at American University's School of International Service right here in Washington, D.C. Asen, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So do you have an idea for a future episode of the stream? Share it with us via Facebook. We want to hear about your stories from around the world. So just go to facebook.com forward slash AJStream and drop us a line in the message thread. It's one way you can be in the stream. Hi, I'm Samuel Zuprakas. I am a student at Tufts University and a researcher in technology for development, and I'm in the stream. It's been a winter of protests for Bulgaria. Tens of thousands have taken to the streets over high electricity and heating bills that have put a real strain on people who live in the European Union's poorest nation. And the situation becomes increasingly desperate. Five people self-immolated in apparent protests, and dozens have been injured in clashes with police. Bulgarians are not only speaking out against economic hardships, but also what some see as a failing democracy, suffering from corruption and ties to organized crime. And last month, after much public pressure, Prime Minister Borisov and his government stepped down. But that hasn't been enough for protesters as they continue to call for greater transparency and political reform. So, what are the next steps for Bulgaria? Here to help us discuss this is Peter Kachashki. He's a protest organizer, activist, and representative of the civil society group Modern Bulgaria. Peter joins us from Sofia. Also with us from Bulgaria is Desislava Petrova. She's a human rights activist and one of many protesting. And we also have Boyan Tabutov. He is the founder of Citizens Initiative for Active Democracy. That is an NGO based in Blagrovad, Bulgaria. Boyan, Dostislava, Peter, welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> so, Thank you for coming us. Dostislava, I, I want to start with you. Give us a sense of the effect that these high energy costs are having on the lives of people in Bulgaria. How much of an average person's monthly income do you think is taken up by these increases? For some of the people, it's over 100%. Because old people, the pension they get, it's even lower than the, the, the electricity bill they, they had this winter. So for some of the people, it's really impossible to cover this expense. And the average, average, uh, average person that gets about five to 800 level of salary, it's about 20, 30% of their income. Wow, that is huge. Uh, Asen, in 1997, um, Bulgarian protesters toppled the government over high unemployment rates and, and a bad economy. And now the economic situation is not as bad as it was in 97, but we've seen five people self-immolate. What do you think is, is driving this increased level of desperation? Indeed, uh, there's a big difference between what was the situation in Bulgaria in 1996 and 1997 when the entire econo economy was not just with our high unemployment, but exchange rate was plummeting and inflation was uh, running into really high numbers to the degree that it qualifies as uh, hyperinflation. Uh, literally, incomes were drained really quickly, but also the savings were washed out. Today, it's a much different situation. Bulgaria is part of EU, one. Bulgaria has m stable currency. Bulgaria is a good place to do business. Unfortunately, the economic growth, the catch-up that Bulgaria has done in the several years since it joined the European Union, was not strong enough to help all of the segments in the society the prolonged financial crisis worldwide drained the foreign investments in Bulgaria 
unfortunately the corruption which is still not eradicated in Bulgaria is also a factor as a result many social groups and low income segments of the society are in a situation today when they cannot meet their expenses. So maybe more of a feeling of hopelessness now even though the economy is better than it was in 97. I think it's the fact that the uh, crisis has been prolonged mm -hmm. for years now and that creates sense of massive frustration uh, uh, among certain segments of the society. Mm, it's that sense of frustration that uh, is being echoed here by Constantine on Twitter who says we have to eradicate the injustice and the sense of injustice in Bulgaria, the feeling that the state isn't fair. But Peter, I want you to have uh, a listen to this video comment from Constantine who followed up. Ha have a listen. The protests in Bulgaria are decreasing because no, there is no one to vote in parliament and the next elections will happen in May. People feel that their voices are weak and this is causing the self-immolations, which reminds us of the poor state in which are Bulgarian uh, media freedom and Bulgarian dem democracy. I expect a kind of reform in the energy sector, but I don't expect a strong government, which means that uh, the protests may start all over again in the autumn. So, Peter, he mentioned the self-immolations, and you, you and your organization have been working on changing the political structure for about a year now. So did you see this coming? Yeah, actually, we were part of this process for almost a year now. And uh, when we first uh, ring the bell uh, in, the, in the 24th of uh, June last year, pretty much no one heard us because uh, we sounded kind of uh, strange, you know, we were saying that that the political system has to change and the people have to have the right of being part of an equal part of the political processes. And uh, I think that uh, now we, we, we are facing the situation in which we are uh, True, but but this is making us very sad because, as you as you mentioned, five people have self-immolated because of the of the idea that they, they don't have nothing else to do here. They don't have any other option of of uh, influencing the society and making a change in the political perspectives. Uh, uh, Sen, it's unusual uh, to see Bulgarians protesting, certainly. And while some reports, and a lot of actually what we're talking about here, connects it to you know, the austerity measures and the, the high cost of electricity, but then there are plenty who argue it goes way beyond this. And this is really a protest and a demonstration about a, a government that's falling apart, about systemic corruption in the system. Uh, indeed, the sense of lack of justice uh, all over these years of transitioning to market economy is very strong among Bulgarians. The sense that the rule of law is not prevailing in the society, that the political elite can get it their way, and the sense of injustice is very strong. And one can see the, in the media uh, and in the statements the protest organizers are making, this is one of the uh, fundamental statements and message that they're getting across. Political class, political system needs to reform and needs to move further to have much more transparency in the decision-making process to make sure that the state serves equally well, not just businesses and people who are uh, currently in the political system, but everyone else and making sure that there are mechanisms to hearing of voices of people, making sure that members of the parliament stay intact with uh, people who have elected them, being in constant touch with them, l uh, learning about their needs and making sure that whatever is uh, adopted as a law or perhaps uh, new rules reflect their interest and not just the interest of the business sector or political elite. Boyan, why do you think the so many people in Bulgaria see their political leaders as corrupt? Well, that's uh, first of all because of the past history, especially in the past 23 years. And uh, uh, besides uh, the whole system being corrupt uh, uh, in terms of uh, no politician ever being uh, uh, sent to court or sent to jail because of uh, malpractices when it comes to uh, you, uh, misusing that power. Uh, that's an, one reason why uh, common people see politicians as being corrupt. Another one is uh, 
a great deal of people believe that politicians are not standing up for the for the common good for the for the ordinary people but they're standing up for the interest of uh, of a certain class like a certain uh, business interest and uh, that's that's all they care about and uh, that's one of the reasons people weren't happy and uh, went out uh, went out on the street well, Dr. Slava, as a human rights activist, I want your thoughts on this, because we just heard uh, Professor Asin just say, uh, you know, that we need mechanisms for uh, the, the people to become part of the government or to, to feel like their voices are heard. But what we're hearing is, is that that's not happening. On Twitter, Yurikov says corruption and politics, mafia ties are so deep, we can't eradicate them without harming the livelihood of half of the country. And we got a Facebook comment from Daniel who says two big issues in Bulgaria are organized crime and corruption. The whole political system is rotten to the core. Now, Dostislava, as a human rights activist, would you agree with this? Absolutely agree with both comments. And I would say that all the political parties, all the existing political parties by now are, are totally discredited. Nobody trusts them. And that's a big problem, I see, because now we have not a single bridge between the society and the political elite, so, so to say. And that's the main problem, because... In two months, we have another elections. We will have again the same parties or some new smaller parties rising. But I don't see the change. I think what's what's needed now is the to have a really strong civil society in Bulgaria, really united civil society, and to find a way to have a dialogue with the institutions. But how do you start making that civil society from street protests? How do you turn street protests into political parties? Well, it's it's really difficult to start a civil society from the street, but at least there are some people that were part of this protest that are from this civil society, sort of, and coming from different organizations. One thing I engaged myself doing is uh, to organize the first roundtable where we collected about 500 participants to sit down and to discuss what's the possible steps that we can take from now from now on and what what do we really want from the government well you know and, uh, yeah well part of civil society of course is is having robust journalism and last month then prime minister borisov was questioned about leaked documents um, that revealed his connections to organized crime and in an informal press conference, he appeared to actually threaten journalists with the country's Secret Service. He was quoted as saying, I can order the Secret Services to launch similar cases for all of you journalists, all of you without exception. So, Boyan, to what do you contribute that kind of behavior, that kind of overtly corrupt behavior? Uh, that was a really astonishing case and uh, a good example of uh, that to the current uh, the, what the past government uh, was uh, abusing power and uh, feeding this sense of uh, powerlessness amongst people and uh, that things are, are corrupt and uh, uh, this seems uh, this seems to be one of the reasons why people didn't believe that uh, things are not going are not going to change you know we have a video comment um, on this very topic have a listen we Bulgarians are quite cynical about documents which were leaked because of previous occasions when they were used only for smearing campaigns. Uh, therefore, the trust in local links at the beginning was very low. Mainstream media didn't report on it, so most people didn't even actually hear about this information. Uh, they were reported only on online outlets, and there even people were polarized. Some thought it's conspiracy theory, other, for others it was simply reaffirming their convictions. Um, Therefore, I think that Bokunings had more polarizing the galvanizing effects and didn't bring much new context in the Bulgarian protests. So as seen, he said in, in the comment uh, that this just reinforced people's already negative perceptions about government. So you know, people are cynical. How do, you, how do we combat that? Uh, so I'm glad to see that uh, Bulgarian youth is on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad to see uh, the use of social media to organize uh, people's opinion because in the past year or two social media Facebook in particular has been used widely to put all of these protesters to protest together it's true not everyone who signs to come and join uh, the protests 
in reality joins it. But uh, it is through this kind of uh, organized movement that we, the people in Bulgaria, can put pressure uh, on the political elite to reform itself. I'm afraid, uh, and I'd, I'd like to share the opinion of one of our guests, that uh, there is not much time left for uh, protest movements to get organized and have proper representation in the National Assembly, uh, Bulgarian legislature. Uh, however, uh, the fact that they are determined to continue to put pressure on the political elite to reform itself, uh, it's, a, it's a good one because that's one way we can hopefully eradicate the corruption and hopefully bring the uh, decision making close to the needs of the people. And yet we need to be careful because uh, populism may not deliver uh, good things either because at this moment Bulgaria enjoys uh, economic stability, macroeconomic stability, as well as relative political stability. Uh, the way we make changes uh, may have critical impact. We'd like to have smooth and yet um, decisive transition to more transparent government. You know, Peter, you're one of the protest organizers. The current government uh, has resigned, but the protests continue. Uh, to what to what end? What is the objective of the protesters? What what do they and, and you want? I'm pretty sure that this uh, uh, the whole situation here in Bulgaria will continue uh, to be to, to uh, its unstable way because I'm pretty sure that the people in Bulgaria will continue protesting because they will they will they want to see themselves represented in the in the political structures they want to see themselves in the national parliament so uh, i think that if the political parties uh, recreate themselves in the, the following elections they will just uh, uh, fill in the national assembly with uh, with political parties who are already part of the system who are already part of this model of ruling the country in which the, econom the economy is uh, filled with oligarchics uh, and uh, somehow uh, uh, corruption. So I think that if the political system recreates the, itself, the people will will throw down another government. We'll see that in the autumn, I'm pretty sure of that. So I think that th the main reason that the people are on the streets is political representation. And I think that just opening the political system and having the option of civil lists, for example, will, will make the change that the people are are w wanting to see at the moment. So, Boyan, the elections are being held in May. The current political leaders lack credibility. The protesters aren't doing a tremendous job of putting up uh, potential candidates. W what do you see happening here? What are your expectations for the election? Well, the elections will be on the 12th of May, and uh, my expectations is that uh, there are a great a lot of people that uh, were not actually on the street. Uh, uh, the way we call them, the, the, like the uh, the sitting protesters, meaning they're in front of TV being discontented, uh, uh, but they're still going uh, going about, and uh, uh, they're going to express their uh, disapproval and discontent during the for the coming elections. Well, see, there's an interesting uh, comment here on Facebook from Paul who says the reason that the government resigned was to avoid having to change the law that allowed for a crony privatization in the first place. So uh, I want your thoughts on this. Is the resignation just a chance to retreat, go back, you know, in order to make their parties um, viable for the May elections? Certainly there is a perception that this was a kind of move to kind of retreat back in order to gain uh, political uh, support down the road. However, I think it's deeper than that. Uh, it's in the past several election cycles in Bulgaria, uh, the main characteristic, characteristic of these uh, cycles was uncertainty. And no one at this moment can predict what will happen on, in the weeks before the elections. Uh, certainly the former ruling party, that's GERP, was trying to regroup and perhaps reorganize and create bad impression of you know the only political uh, party that can create order in the society and take the responsibility for governing the country and yet 
these uh, perception or expectations may turn out to be wrong uh, as some of the commentators uh, just suggested they insist that not just the ruling party but just everyone mm -hmm. changes and changes in a substantial way so that we have much greater representation and if this doesn't happen could that happen uh, by may realistically though uh, well this could happen if indeed parties open up for dialogue and perhaps this could be the best thing that can happen to the Bulgarian uh, political system opening up the parties cleaning them up some of the parties already indicated they they like to unload all faces that they suspect that are related with the business uh, sectors and perhaps lobbying for the businesses. I do not see it at the scale that is needed to radically reform the political system and political parties. But we still have uh, weeks to go close to two months to the election day. Things just are going to unfold in the coming weeks. Dostoslava, give us your take on that. How hopeful are you, are you that things can start to move in the right direction at least by May? I think they, they already started moving, but I don't believe that they will stop developing until May. I mean, that's just the beginning. And I believe that uh, until the end of this year, we'll have new elections, second elections after May, because the government, uh, we will not be able to form a new government after the elections in May. Peter, there's been considerable infighting among the protesters. Uh, are they organized enough to create some sort of a unified front that will have a meaningful voice in the May elections? I think that it is it is the magic of the civil society that it's not very structured. You know, it's the idea of having different opinions. This is this is uh, what the civil society should stand for. So I don't think that that having different opinions in the society is in some, 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 some case bad or, or disorganized. But the thing is that I don't see uh, many civil society groups getting organized uh, until the elections. I think that... Uh, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you right there, Peter, because we're out of time, but we're going to continue the conversation. I will pick up right where we left off in our post show. So to watch that, go to stream.aljazeera.com. But before you do, Malika's got just a few other stories that we're following. These days, there's an app for almost everything. So it was only a matter of time before the police became the latest service available at your fingertips. Mexico City's Ministry of Public Security is making that possible with its smartphone app, Mi Policia, or My Police. It uses GPS technology to allow citizens to communicate in real time with the city's 76,000 police officers. The app has two functions, as shown in this video from Mexico's El Universal TV. You can report an emergency or crime or geolocate the closest police official. However, the app also allows users to be tracked by police. Now, that's one detail that has residents wondering if it will be successful. And as the Wired website points out, only 2.8% of people living in Mexico trust the police. Our next lead's from Brazil, where netizens have collected nearly 450,000 signatures to protest against the new leader of the country's Human Rights Commission. The petition calls for the immediate removal of Marco Feliciano, an evangelical preacher accused of making homophobic and racist statements in tweets and public appearances. Following his election earlier this month, Feliciano denied the accusations, but protests have ensued. Activist groups have taken to the streets, and some netizens demand his removal from the position. Our thanks goes to Felipe Gavaza for sharing the story with us on Facebook. Your story suggestion could make our next show, so let us know what news you're following. Leave us a message on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Lisa? All right, stay with us. The Post Show is next. It's streamed on aljazeera.com. On our next program, they lurk in the corners of society, and only a few are brave enough to speak out. We're going to look at sex trafficking victims in the United States and whether enough is being done to rescue them from the shadows. Until then, we'll see you online.
Welcome back. This is the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking about the social unrest and the protests in Bulgaria. What should be done to fix the root cause of political turmoil in the country? I want to get back to our conversation with Peter Kachansky. He's a protest organizer, and we left out of the main program with Peter. You were saying that protesters don't necessarily have to be 100% unified, that different voices are what create a civil society. But do you feel like this is still a people's movement? I mean, there are plenty of reports that this whole thing has really been hijacked by political opposition and from the extreme uh, the extreme right yeah we, we can say that we can we are probably observing such attempts but I don't see that I don't believe that the political uh, system are brave enough to try to uh, to mount this whole uh, civil society idea I think that the citizens here in Bulgaria are despite not not being very organized they are very uh, well informed so I think that they they won't they won't let the the political parties get used to, get getting used by them. So I think that uh, yeah, there may be not a lot of political civil society movements that are organized at the moment. Actually, I don't. Besides our modern Bulgaria, I don't see any any much organized uh, civil society movements. But besides that, I think that the, the citizens here in Bulgaria are well uh, educated and well uh, informed, so they can very fast they can form very fast uh, different uh, ideas they can shape different ideas so I don't believe that uh, saying that the, the civil society is not ready for any type of political actions is, is true I, I think that the, the civil society is just stepping on the political on the political stone and I believe that we are going to see as many uh, political actions by citizens as we, we can by the end of the year well, you know, we ended our main show asking for expectations. So we tweeted out to our community what they think is going to happen. And they and Bozidar wrote back that Borisov, the former prime minister, will win the elections, but will have to form a coalition with most probably the party of M. Kuneva, uh, speaking of Meglena Kuneva. And we also have a video comment on those same lines. Uh, Boyan, have a listen to this and let me know your thoughts after. Well, we don't have something really new on the political scene. On 12th of May... At the parliamentary elections, we will have a rivalry between two ex-prime ministers, Sergei Stanishev and Boyko Borisov, both already unloved from the nation. The new and interesting of these elections is the candidacy of a lady, Meglena Kuneva. Her new party, Bulgaria of the Citizens, probably will become the third at the new parliament, and every new face gives us a new hope. So, Boyan, is that what's needed, new faces? Uh, new faces, of course, are needed because uh, they'll bring fresh and new ideas. Uh, whether a uh, new coalition form will be uh, formed be, uh, between uh, Meglana Kunov and Boyko Borisov is a completely diff uh, another matter, and uh, it's too early to state whether that's going to be the case. I just hope, uh, contrary to what the other participants mentioned, that uh, there are not going to be second elections till the end of the year, just for the sake of the country, because. Uh, uh, Currently, the whole government has stopped operating, and that's not helping out getting out of the country from the economic and financial crisis. So I hope uh, as soon as possible we'll get on track and uh, start solving the deep-cutting problems when it comes to the monopoly, when it comes to the uh, social situation, when it comes to the income of the people. These are all priorities uh, that needs to be solved as soon as possible. and. Uh, uh, postponing him for another year is just going to uh, make uh, matters worse, not better. Uh, Asen, do you think the public's grievances are solely with the Bulgarian government? What about the EU? I mean, there's an argument that Bulgaria joined the EU prematurely. Well, there is an argument uh, indeed that Bulgaria should have been done much better job in reforming its system before joining the EU. And of course one can say, and that's my position as well, that EU can be used as a leverage to accelerate the changes. Uh, and the uh, European Union by itself has been a mess. Uh, in many ways, uh, and it's not out of the woods as of yet. So certainly Bulgarians have expected much more from the European Union uh, in terms of help, and in terms of help in particular to support the job creation, but also helping uh, through the income policy to people that I need. Indeed, there is a relatively big segment, perhaps the biggest segments 
within the European Union that needs income support so that people can uh, meet their payments for electric, uh, electricity, for food, among other things. And I think the European Union itself needs to rethink its orientation in terms of how those resources are spent. And currently there are some voices to direct more funds towards, for example, job creation for disadvantaged groups, mm -hmm. including youth unemployment. Uh, those are just few of the things that Bulgaria can do, and European can do, European Union can do. But also, Bulgaria itself needs to uh, make sure that capacity to absorb funds from the European Union is there. It needs to educate people how to apply for money, for structural adjustments. It needs to uh, involve much more people uh, and make this process much more transparent because at this moment, the sense that lots of bureaucratic careers exist is quite strong. And in essence, uh, the second feeling is that many of this money will go to uh, companies related to political elite, and that is something that needs to be fixed once and for all. Peter, the protests seem quite nationalistic. I see a lot of Bulgarian flags out there in the video. What's your sense on the ground? Do you, do you feel a sense of anger toward the EU among protesters? I think that this is this is not the main issue. Yeah, there are some people who who, who are feeling themselves uh, a bit angry uh, towards the EU, but I don't think that this is the main part. You know, in this protest, we, you can see the whole society uh, broaden up, and and it and stepping on that, uh, you can you can say easily that you can say you can see a lot of nationalists. You can say a lot of, for example, mothers with uh, small children on this protest. So I don't think that that uh, there is a certain group that has uh, a majority of uh, um, yeah, let's say, of uh, influence over the protests. But I think that that the, the society at the moment is not needing any, any type of new faces. Actually, when Borisov entered the parliament, uh, he introduced it, um, uh, a lot, like uh, more than 100 new faces to the, poli to the, polis to the political stage. And they, they've done nothing, uh, nothing good, actually. So I, I don't think that the new faces is, the, is, the, is the, the way that we're going to change. I think that the, the more... Uh, uh, the more option of we having of uh, influencing the political process. This is this is the keystone. Everything else is just a just a, a saying, and and I don't believe that uh, even let's say uh, the previous uh, uh, people have mentioned the, uh, the party of Maglena Kuneva. I don't see that she was after all she was a Euro Commissioner. I don't believe that she's going to bring the change, and uh, I don't think that any of the of the faces at the moment are going to bring that change. So the only the only keystone that we have to unite to is the is the idea of citizen control. The politicians and the citizen can uh, try to be part of the political system. Well, Dostoevsky, we have a video comment here, looking at things a, a little bit more positively. Have a listen. Bulgarian protesters wanted to change the system with a revolution, but I don't think we can have a revolution. We already have democracy and market economy. Here, they are still young and have problems. Politicians are just representatives of society. And as a society, we must learn not to be quiet about small things that matter, to be inquisitive and demand the right actions from the officials. And we must point out any instance of cheating or trying to circumvent the rules by anyone daily. I think that's, that's the way to drive steady evolution to our democracy. So that's the Slava. He says, we already have a democracy. We just need to fix it. Yeah, we, need, we really need to fix it because the democracy we had so far it's not the democracy I believe in. And uh, one of everyone's mistake was that by now we've been quite silent and unorganized. And we've been always waiting for our Messiah, for our Savior, for our new face that would just come and change the whole country and make something good for us. And I believe that uh, one of the reasons people are out on the streets now is that they, they realized it's not something possible and they should be part of the process. They should take part in it. And it's the same like Peter said, it's, it's, it's not the new faces that's gonna change the situation and that's gonna change the system. It's also the mechanisms that we need. And yeah, for sure, one of the things is more transparency because the levels of corruption are really the highest in the European Union. 
and that's something that really brings back our country. And uh, the other problem is that uh, there is no really a dialogue between the institutions and the citizens. All right. Desislava Petrova, Asen Asenov, Peter Kachansky, and Boyan Tabudov, thank you so much for joining us today. On our next show, Victims of Sex Trafficking, we're going to examine what's being done to end human trafficking in the United States. So send us your thoughts and your questions on that. And until then, we'll see you online. <laughs>